So I wanted to talk briefly in this video about Rahi, specifically about classic Rahi, the Rahi that I tend to design most often. It's the thing that I've sort of been building my entire online presence around for a very long time. And though I am known for other things, it is absolutely the thing that I am most well known for. What do I consider a classic Rahi? Well, Essentially, these are Rahi that use, for a majority of their parts, classic pieces. Not because I'm trying to, you know, exert some kind of challenge on myself. No, rather to acquire a very specific type of aesthetic. Very similar to the aesthetic of the Rahi from all the way back in 2001, 2002, 2003. Very heavy use of lift arms and fairly few, though obviously more and more specialized pieces depending on which year you are looking at. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't use parts from after that point. In fact, I do often because it's not about making them with the parts solely available in 2001 because that can be quite difficult. And I have a lot of admiration for Lego's design team being able to crank out so many hits after hits all the way back then. But rather... I want to go for this specific aesthetic because it is what speaks to me the most as not only a designer, but as a Lego consumer, as a Bionicle consumer specifically. My fondest memories all come from, all stem from my childhood. And though my first set was not a Rahi being Tahu Mata all the way back in 2001, I did see a handful, if not every single Rahi during my childhood, save for the Manus themselves. I would not get my first Rahi until 2003 when I went to the store intending to buy Takanuva and just so happened upon a clearance item that was the original Mawaka and Kanra, uh, Kanera still in the box in 2003. Don't ask me how they got there in a Walmart, but I, yeah, of course I bought that. I, I went straight home right underneath the carport because we didn't have a full garage and I just built. And that was where I often found myself building outdoors, just taking in this environment though i wasn't on a tropical island by any means it felt reasonable to build outside now for a long time i built up this idea that rahi needed to have a very specific aesthetic and do a very specific set of things essentially i had put these rules in my mind about how rahi needed to be built how they had to look and that they had to always all have functions that dealt with combat in some way but it took me a long time to realize that's not really true. And in fact, I implore you not to set up these bar uh, these barriers for yourself. Now, it can be good, in fact, fun, and I do encourage you to sometimes challenge yourself, to sometimes think outside the box, to get out of your comfort zone and try doing something different. But don't do it because you have to. Here's the thing. For a long time, I wanted to build Rahi since 2001, but I didn't until roughly about 2018 when I started, maybe a little bit earlier than that. And though I had definitely built things I would consider Rahi up until that point, oftentimes they were a more modern style because that was just easier for me to work with. But working with lift arms, as comfortable as I was with them, still felt alien to me when it meant I was behind the designing, when I was in that driver's seat for the first time. What I ended up doing which I recommend, and it's something I've talked about on the channel before, is a challenge. And I'll talk about that challenge here more towards the end of the video. But I had a question that I wanted to answer in this video specifically. Do Rahi need to have functions? For a long time, I would have answered that question with yes. But now, I don't believe that's true. I look at sets like the Master Builder set, which I didn't get my hands on up until about 2014, 2013, somewhere in there, thanks to a lucky eBay purchase. And when I got my hands on it, I was maybe a little bit disappointed by the fact that several of the sets didn't have functions at all. In fact, most of them didn't even wear masks. Another thing that I thought, or I had built up this idea in my head that they needed to do. Now, you may know this because um, I actually have a little Rahi down here. I can try and show though I didn't get it out for the sake of this video, so it's going to be a little bit hard for me to get my hands on it. Yeah, no. <laughs> it, needs, it needs some tender loving care. Um, but I do have some Rahi in front of me that I wanted to go ahead and showcase as well. 
So when I talk about functions, I think of creatures like this little cicada build here that I came up with last summer because, well, I'm surrounded by cicadas in the summer and we're about to have another big year of them. But I wanted to build them because they're fairly iconic creatures in their aesthetic and they don't really do much in real life. I mean, sure, they do. They have a whole life cycle. But to humans, at the very least, from our perspective, cicadas do what? They go up into a tree and scream. And I mean, sure, relatable. But also, what would I make this do? Here's the thing. This could have been enough for me. And in many cases, it would have been because this looks aesthetically pleasing. I did go out of my way, of course, to actually add a function into here. And it is a pretty clever function for lack of a better term and not to toot my own horn here but it's something that i'd never done before however it is not a combat focused function something that for a long time i believed in this case here you have a mouth that you can push down on and i knock the <laughs> leg off but that's fine and the wings will spread no big deal those legs are connected to bars and connected to hollow studs so a little bit too easy to knock off but works nonetheless so how did I get to this point? Well, what I did back in about 2018 was I took some of my absolute favorite sets from Classic Bionicle, the Borok Va specifically, and I took every single one of them because thankfully I own them and they're not terribly expensive sets to get your hands on, especially secondhand, and especially if you seek the parts out, save for maybe the black pins that are involved. But the sets themselves are pretty simple. However, I've talked in previous videos about why I think they're better than the Turaga, and one reason why is because of the parts that they come with. They just come with a better part selection that allows for much easier mocking, in my opinion. LEGO designed four Rahi from the Borak Va as combination models of any two Borak Va each. So I took that idea and I expanded upon it. What about the other Rahi? What about the other Borak Va that didn't see combinations? What could I do? if I took them and did something of my own with them. Well, that's exactly what I did. I went out of my way to combine every other possible combination that Lego neglected to do to try to make Rahi from each, from as many as I could. Some of these were good, some of these were a bit lackluster, but all in all, what each one did was it helped me to sort of identify these barriers that I had set for myself, because in a way, it was a form of self-sabotage. When I thought that Rahi couldn't have functions, I didn't have a reason why, or rather why they had to have functions. I just thought that because, well, Lego included functions in theirs, but of course they did. They were products on a store and they wanted kids to be able to play with them. We weren't at the point where we were abandoning functions yet, and I'll get to that in a separate video. But in this case here, the Rahi to me were masterfully designed, but that doesn't mean that they're perfect. And I think that's another way that I sabotaged myself because I thought that what Lego had done could not be done again, at least not by myself. It took a team of designers to do these, right? And so I would never get to that point. So why bother trying? And that's the main problem. I held myself back for so long. Who knows what else I could have created between then and now? Who knows where I would be in terms of my Rahi count? Would I be at 200 or would I be further? Probably further. But here's the thing. I talked specifically about one of the very first Rahi that I designed. This is not the one, but this is a combination from two of the Borakva one-to-one. -one. Nothing here has been changed. You can make this little walrus build right here from Galakva and Levakva. And in fact, I did so in such a way that it only used the colored pieces from the blue Borakva as well, which I thought was a neat little touch on top of that. But I didn't start at that point. The very first Rahi I made was a combination between the lime green, or sorry, the green and the blue Borak Va, but it looked terrible. And I knew it going in, but I still set it aside. I said, okay, it's fine. I'll get back to it when I get back to it. And I think that was a real turning point for me because I easily could have seen what I designed, what I made and thought to myself, this is not good. I need to stop. I don't have the skills for this. Very easily could have done that, but I chose not to. I chose to tread forward, right? To keep on going in this direction, in this challenge that I had set myself. And what I noticed is that as time went on, as I hammered through more and more of these mocks, the animals started becoming more and more recognizable. 
so I became a little bit more proud of myself, not only because through the experience was I gaining experience, but each time that I came across a problem, I started to identify that the problem I was running into was on me. It was in my head. The fact that these Rahi didn't have functions, they didn't need to have functions. They still looked aesthetically pleasing. They still, you know, for the most part, followed all of Lego's building rules. Yeah, there were certain ones that I used illegal building techniques for, and I'll pop one of those up on screen, and you'll have to uh, excuse the fact that this is going to be an Explorer and why some of these have black backgrounds when they're all PNGs. I don't know. But suffice to say, one of the Rahi that you can see here is the Pakiri Barracuda, and that was originally designed as a combination between the white and the brown Barak Fa. Now, obviously, the version that you see on screen here has had some pieces added to it for, you know, making it look a little bit nicer, but it looked pretty close to that, and right next to it, too. The Pacamo Frog. That was the very first Rahi that I actually threw onto Discord. So, in a nutshell, you could consider it the first Rahi that I had designed. I don't know if it actually was, of course, but it also is a Rahi that has no function. It just looks the part, and it looks good. It does a good job doing it. I have a Rahi here that's a little bit on the larger side for some of what I create, which is another one of the elephants that I designed. Not the dwarf elephant that you'll see down at the bottom here, though actually the same color, which I think is funny. And this one does have a function. It could arguably even be said that it has a combat focus function. I'll go ahead and show that here. That is the Tigura elephant. And the reason I have this built is I actually have to submit it for a contest that I won, but I forgot to do so. <laughs> so I'm going to have to take some pictures of it later. But this elephant right here all spawned from a different challenge. Something that I like to do is I like to dig through old media from Bionicle from time to time. And oftentimes I'll look especially into concept art, even more especially into Rahi concept art specifically, or even cut models. I have this idea, this theory that we were originally going to get an ash bear from Bionicle at some point, but they did not do it. I, I don't know the reason for this. I have no way to even support that this was necessarily true, though I have heard some anecdotes at the very least that we were going to get in a uh, combination model of one. But this one specifically was actually a cut Rahi from the Bionicle 2003 game, the Mask of Light game, whatever you want to call it. So it never actually showed up in the game itself. And it's supposed to have this like battery pack on its back here. I'll find the file and I will throw it on uh, Discord so you guys can check out both that uh, figure, that thing. It's kind of low poly, but it should get the point across. But also so you can check out that whole folder as a whole because I put a lot of stuff into it. Suffice to say, it was just part of a challenge. I think that's kind of the main draw from this. We often sort of stump our own creativity with the idea that we can never do as good as something that has already been done. And as I mentioned in this video, the Rahi from 2001 are exceptional, but they're not perfect. And I think the designers know that because, well, first of all, there's no such thing, really. But also, you could make the argument, well, shouldn't the Terracava have legs if they're lizards? Or shouldn't the Moaka and Kanebra even more optimally have legs, being what they are? But I think there's a sort of line in the sand that you don't want to cross. First of all, just the exorbitant price of designing those models in such a way so that they can fit legs because those took a decent amount of parts to make and were already quite large. So the price point at some point would become just too expensive, especially for the first wave of sets. And though I have designed a miniature version of the Kane Ra and Muaka that has been much smaller, obviously that's just something I did. Here's the thing. The 2001 Rahi are perfect for what they are and what they are trying to do. They're easy enough to identify. You can look at the Nui Rama and say, yeah, that's an insect. You can look at the Nui Jaga and easily see that they're a scorpion. Maybe the one that's the furthest out there would be the Terracaba being lizards, but at the very least, they're relatively thin. The head shape is close enough, and the functions are obviously going to be the thing that make it the furthest from looking like a lizard. The arms aren't really sprawled out to the side, but at the same time, the whole point of the set is it needs to be functional in those cases. And I think for that, 
they did an excellent job. What is best to take away from a video like this is that the only thing stopping you, or at least the main thing maybe stopping you, from pushing on past your biases that you may not even know you have is experimentation, is exposure. Because like I said, if I had the same sort of naive mind from back in 2017, 16, 15, and before, I wouldn't be where I am today. I would not have done these things. And though there was no guarantee I was going to be designing Rahi like this, I had so many other people I looked up to because of their designs meeting what I wanted to see from Bionicle. Because I know that it's not like the vast majority of the audience wants to see classic Rahi, but I know that if I do, that there are people like me out there, right? And for a long time, I could have left it at, well, other people are doing this, that's good enough, I don't need to, or I can't. But yes, I can. Now, though I will definitely admit I probably still have biases that I don't recognize. There are probably still brick walls that I run into that I'm just not willing to pass. And sometimes that is intentional, but sometimes I don't even see it. But that's part of why I still build. 200 Rahi later, I'm still learning. And I'm still learning to accept that Rahi don't always look perfect. Rahi can be made more than once. You don't have to have one lizard and then, oh, you're done now. You've made the lizard quota. But you can do more. You can do more than you expect, than you think, than you know. The same is true for me. The same is true for you. And you just have to get out there and try. It doesn't mean that the first thing you make is going to be good. By God, I know mine wasn't. And I'll tag the video at the end of this one so you can see the very first Rahi mock that I ever made. So you can see the very first mock that I ever made and the milestone that followed that. But at the same time, though I tend to focus on smaller Rahi because I just find little desk toys like this one charming, though it doesn't really need to have its little feet on there anymore. And these are just fun to play with, easy to put together in 5, 10, 15 minutes at most, including finding those pieces, I also like to build big things. And sometimes I make sure that they have some type of functionality, like a little trigger mechanism for headbutting here. But sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just build something that looks good and that's good enough for me. Maybe I add some sort of posability on it, try to work in a way for the legs to move and the ankles to move or whatever. But it's not even always the case. It doesn't need to be. And oftentimes, I find myself building when I don't know exactly what I'm trying to do. I've talked maybe briefly about one of my favorite experiences when it came to Rahi building. And it was a day, it's not the first time that this has happened. It's not the only time that this has happened, but it's probably the most notable. So like many creatives out there, I have episodes of creativity and then episodes that I'm just going to call a drought for all intents and purposes. It's not that I can't be creative in those moments because I don't know when I'm in a creative episode or when I'm just, you know, I don't, I don't have anything on the top of my mind that I want to build. But one of these days where I was being a bit more creative was when I was designing the Benora Crab. So it is a crab Rahi that I designed several years ago at this point. And I'll go ahead and show this one to you too. Just pull it up here on screen. Not that one. <laughs> this one right here, right? And the whole point of this design, and you can kind of see it in that picture, is that the machine, the, the crab scuttles sideways. If you're familiar with the Puku and Takua set, you know the function that that set has. And this is very similar, done in a very different way, but I wanted it to be a sideways scuttle like many real life crabs do, right? So I sat down and started prototyping and the first prototype was an absolute disaster. I, I recognized maybe 15, 20 pieces into it that this was not going to work. So I started on a new prototype that re relied on these camshaft system knocking lift arms into the air and then these rubber bands like pulling back down. And I realized that was a problem for purposes that I might get into in a future video. But then eventually, I, I don't know exactly what I was doing, but I dug around through one of my bins and I found those knob gears. And I thought to myself, you know, 
The spacing between these knobs looks just about right for a connector to fit into, and I was right. It was just something I had become familiar with over time, the same way you might become familiar with being able to identify the length of an axle just looking. Colors be damned, right? And so I set out to work on a new version of this build from scratch. I had brainstormed all those other versions before, but this was just something new. I knew what I wanted it to do, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. Optimally, this is what ended up becoming this crab here, using those knob gears themselves to actually knock the legs into the air, which was the perfect solution for this. And on top of that, it was far smaller than what I was building before. And that was one of the things I wanted to do was make sure that this was a compact creature. But while I was doing that, I recognized, you know, this base that I build, because yeah, you can look at the crab here and see all the colors and the Barack windscreen on top, but that's just stuff added on to a solid base. I've continued to use this base because it's a good build. And as I was working on it, I recognized that this base itself could very easily be made to be, well, modular. And so I dug through a completely different bit of pieces before I had even finished this model here, right? And I found, well, a handful more pieces to rework the base to eventually turn into this centipede build. And it's crazy because it's basically just the exact same body as the Benora Crab, designed a little bit differently so that it can be modular. And though I did design it originally so that the the you know the design would kind of slink slither right i decided the knob gears aren't really made to do that and i pushed away from it but what i did do what challenged me the most about this build about the centipede was the head because now i wanted to design a head that looked good that looked appropriate for the creature that it was and while doing so i had to find out how exactly i can angle these panels forward and in doing that i found another contraption right so I continue just going through this, just experimenting, playing with all of these parts. And I'm going to try and find this one for you too, because I know it should be in here. Uh, but I don't remember how I, oh, I, yep, yeah, it's here. <laughs> so I played with these panels and I recognized that when I connected them to these angled connectors, they would spin in a way that was very similar to what reminded me of a hummingbird's wing. And I came up with this design here for the Murano hummingbird. Three large Rahi in one sitting, all because of just an idea, just the idea of having a crab that scuttled. That was it. When I was playing with these parts, I recognized these unique options that they offered for me, what they were able to do when they interacted with each other. And I didn't stop at that. I didn't say, well, I just came here to design one thing. I could have very easily. But when I recognized this could be useful somewhere else, I used it. And that's something I never would have done before because like I said, I was of the belief that when something was done once, you couldn't do it again. Even though like my favorite build from the Master Builder set was the Fusa Kangaroo, which essentially just had the same function as the Terracava, why I was okay with it when Lego did it, but not when I did it, I don't know. And I can't tell you why. Other than it was self-sabotage. I believed it couldn't be done better, it couldn't be done again, and yet all of the evidence was in front of me that yes, it can be, and you should try. Just because something has been done doesn't mean you can't retread the same ground, because if it isn't broke, don't fix it. That was true here too. And I wouldn't have been here if I couldn't identify that that was something I was telling myself because I didn't think that I could. And if I just didn't listen, if I just stopped, if I just let things happen, but that's what I can do. Now, that's not to say that every single process that I go through, every single time that I sit down and build, that I crank out all these Rahi all at once. Occasionally, yeah, I do get some days where I design two or three, but oftentimes it's one every few days. I do, thankfully, have a very fast sort of uh, from start to finish, but it doesn't mean that I just directly jump into something else. Sometimes, not always, and that's okay too. Because like I said, we're all creatives, but anybody who's trying to be creative 100% of the time is going to swiftly be met with disappointment because it's very difficult, near impossible, I'd say. So hopefully this video inspires you because it's really all I know. My fundamental world changed when I realized that 
nothing out there is perfect. Nothing is as it seems. And when something has been done, it doesn't mean that it's off limits. We've paved one road before and we paved the other roads the same. Would we have done that if I was the one designing? I don't know. But it works. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Video like this, obviously unscripted. I tend to go off the rails a bit in them. But hopefully it was concise enough for you and you take from this something that's, well, helpful to you. On top of that, make sure you can apply this information to your own builds. You don't always have to make Rahi, but you can do your own things too and expect failure, but hope for the best. If you want to join the conversation, you can do so down in the comments below, or you can take the conversation further over on Discord, Instagram, or help support the channel and get some perks on Patreon, all of which will be linked in the description below. And of course, your comments are something that I pretty much always address, and it does help the video out as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.